Hi guys, my name is Ali Michaels and today on the Online Prosperity Show, I will be talking to you about my number one best-selling book, Airbnb for Property Investors, how I made six figures and how you can too, even if you don't own any property. Wow. It's not fair because obviously you've probably rehearsed this a while. Oh, please! Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you in the Airbnb queen herself, Ali. Ali, how are you doing, my love? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. How are you today? Fantastic. Now, audience, um, you might be surprised with the guest that we have right now. She's coming all the way from Las Vegas, and Ali is really passionate about helping people take action and live life on their own terms using short-term rentals. Now, she started doing this in uh, 2013, where she used to, the strategy which has helped her create six figures up until today, and now she's teaching people and has written a book about how to, um, you know, use Airbnb as a property investment vehicle. Now, Ali, could you just let us know a little bit about your story, how you got started, and what it is that you actually do there? Sure. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, my uh, my childhood wasn't one that one would be happy to uh, to to talk about. Unfortunately, I watched my mother work uh, in a factory for $3.84 an hour. And uh, as a result, she was never there for me. She was never there to tuck me in. She was never there to read me a bedtime, a bedtime story. And um, as an only child, I found it really, really difficult to make friends. But also, um, I found it even more difficult to actually watch my mother struggle because she was, um, she had just um, divorced my dad, and uh, you know, watching her work, gosh, anywhere between 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Like I said, she was never there for me. It was really, really heart wrenching for an eight year old kid. And on the weekends, we used to go to the trash and treasure markets where she would actually sell garments because she worked for three dollars eighty four an hour. Like I said, as a machinist in Sydney's Kipak Street. And on the weekends, we would go to the trash and treasure markets where she would try to make an extra, you know, 50 to $100. This is back in the scorching heat when we didn't know anything about protection, anything about sunglasses, anything about um, sunscreen. And she would uh, basically take me along with her and I would watch her again, you know, sweat pouring down her face, how she would interact with these other people who were there for the same thing, which was basically to make money to put food on the table for their for their families and I made a decision back uh, in, at that period that I was never going to live that life and I was never going to accept that life which is why I am a firm believer that it's not your background it's not your race it's not your color it's not your age it's not how you were brought up with the right mindset consistent action and a plan you can have and you can be anything you want to in life. So I kind of was set in my own little ways um, back then, but what was the tipping point for me apart from making that decision at the age of, at the age of eight years old was that I found um, at the trash and treasure markets uh, back then, and we're talking a long, long time ago, back in the 80s, um, the, I don't know if you remember, but the, those erasers that used to be in different shapes and colors and they used to have different flavors when you smelt them. Wow. So I would buy them from trash and treasure markets and I would sell them to the kids at school on the Monday for like, uh, well, I'd buy them for like 10, 20 cents and I would sell them for like 50 cents, 80 cents up to a dollar. So within a very, very short period of time, even though I didn't have any money because my mom never gave me any pocket money and I was not a happy little camper about that because um, as a kid, I mean, I'm a vegetarian now and I've been one for a long time, but back then I used to love my chicken burgers, which were a dollar from the canteen. So I never had the pocket money to actually allow myself to get that dollar chicken burger. So when I started to get these erasers and then sell them um, to the kids at school on the Mondays and make this, you know, this money like really, really quickly, and I was able to afford myself to buy the burger 
my whole life changed, as you can imagine. I mean, I'm salivating right now when I'm thinking about this, right? So, but the, the thing about that that was really interesting at the age of eight was that I associated really, really good things with money. I mean, you know, to this day, we have um, a stigma when we talk about money, when we talk about success, when we talk about sex, and when we talk about politics. So for me, money uh, and all of the others are something that I enjoy to talk about and I, and I really want to educate people on because there's no shame in talking about money. There's no shame in talking about um, or any of the others as well. But for me, what, what I learned at the age of eight was that money was simple, money was easy, and money was fun. And as a result, it kind of led me to live my life in that regard by creating opportunities for me that other, people's, that other people wouldn't, uh, wouldn't create, other people wouldn't experience, all because of that mindset. So mindset for me is, is, is a massive thing that changes, you know, who you are as a person and that can literally give you anything you want in life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that uh, um, encounter about your upbringing and also, you know, the whole chicken burger stuff. It reminded me of my growing up as well. I'm genetically, motive, mo mo um, I'm genetically um, you know, designed to loving chicken so i just had my little segue going out there so obviously with such a background and uh, with such an up upbringing it then got you to start you know thinking of the, the, the way that you do uh in as much as where you are is temporary and you know where you're coming from uh is not what's set in stone if people would really have a look at what society tells them. If you're born, if you were born on the other side of the, you know, the railway, people would not naturally think you're never going to amount to anything. What is it that really then gave you the strength in knowing that this is not what um, was, was designed for you? Because yes, you could have just fallen the, the steps of your mom, and not done anything about it, but was there something inside of you or did you read something or how did you then get motivated to realize that this is not what was meant for you? Well, you know, I think, um, you know, even as an eight year old, what I discovered pure by, I guess, just, you know, being me and just, you know, having that interaction with my customers, which was, you know, to sell these erasers to them, um, I found that, you know, everything was in the relationship that you had with the customers and also in the, I guess, the networking that you had with them. And what I mean by that is, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is one of the things that I also love to, to talk about in my, in my workshops, it's the relationship that we have with people. You know, nowadays, I guess the whole, um, the whole, side of the, um, you know, the, the, the interpersonal relationship, you know, we, we don't value it as much. And I think that's where the money is. I think that's where the value is. And I think people love people. I mean, you know, today we've got the internet and we've got social media and we've got Instagram and we've got Twitter and we've got Facebook and we've got all these things. But nobody actually connects anymore. You know, nobody actually... Um, has that you know has that inter interpersonal one to one contact and i think back then what i found through my getting to know the customer so so to speak i found out what they liked what they wanted uh and how to give it to them and by you know by talking to them so basically they learned to you know i guess my lessons even at that age was that they learned to trust me and they learn and i learned that um, once I have their trust and once I can communicate with them in their language, I can pretty much, you know, I, they would buy anything f um, f um, from me. And what I mean by that is, you know, I would literally, you know, grab these erasers on the weekends. Um, it didn't matter what kind of shapes they were, what kind of, you know, smells they had. I was certain that I was going to sell it to my customers on the following day only because I knew how to connect with them, I knew how to speak to them, and I knew how to listen to them. You know, today, today most people listen to respond instead mm -hmm. of listening to understand. 
you know? Um, and I think that's really, really key. And I think that's really, really, really important. I mean, you know, one of my uh, biggest mentors has been Tony Robbins. And, you know, he always says that you're, you know, where you were, you know, where you were born, that's not your final destination. And it's so true because, who, you know, who you were, it does not define who you're going to be. And I think that's really, really important. But in terms of the success per se, a lot of it has to do with communication and with a relationship that you have with your customer and actually understanding your customer and giving your customer what it need, what, what he or she needs. Absolutely. So from erasers, you then um, went on and started a strategy that has since been paying you six figures since 2013. Explain to us, first of all, what Airbnb actually really is. Okay. Well, if I can take a step back and kind of have to sort of, you know, go and as a woman, of course, we want to just talk a little bit longer than we need to. So it was a raises in primary school. And then I had to up, up my game in high school because they didn't want rubbers anymore. Well, they did, but not those kind of rubbers. Okay. So then I had to adapt to the market. And what I would do then is I would buy a magazine from the markets for, for 10 cents. And I would literally rip that off piece by piece. And we would sell that uh, to the to the kids in recess and at lunchtime for you know thirty cents forty cents fifty cents I had um, I guess that was my first company called Nitty Graffiti Incorporated I did a joint venture with the most popular girl in high school and that's what we did to provide value to the customers you know as as um, as I you know grew older uh, but after finishing my my degree which was a degree in education I actually went to travel. And I lived for 10 years in Italy. And when I came back to Australia in 2004, I went to a Tony Robbins event where I made a decision, uh, which brings me to my favorite, I guess, Tony Robbins uh, quote, which is, it's in the moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. And that is so powerful for me because I decided at that point that I was going to buy a property a year for the next 10 years and then retire. And that's what I did. How I came into Airbnb was actually um, through, you know, through a, a, a heartbreak, so to speak, or through, um, you know, a, a business down. You know, uh, people go, you know, why did this happen to me? And uh, a lot of the things that we think are negative or bad for us at the time are really blessings in disguise. And I'm always very, very grateful for that because what actually happened was I had uh, three of my tenants who were paying rent monthly that didn't pay the rent for the month at the same time. So I had uh, a little under $15,000 for the mortgage for the month and I had no money to pay it. And again, through my negotiation skills and through my relationship that I had with my bank manager, I was able to get myself out of that runt. But in doing so, again, being a, an avid reader and also an avid uh, personal development and, and self-development uh, you know, goer, I, I like to go to the seminars, I like to keep up to date, I like to learn, I like to study, I like to grow mentally. Um, I was at one event and I had met a friend of mine that, you know, you go to these events and to workshops and so forth. And, you, and every now and then you kind of like see the same people. And uh, I was just telling her, you know, I'm feeling rich. She's like, you know, Ali, you don't look yourself. What's going on? And I'm like, well, you know, I had three of my tenants. They didn't pay the rent. I'm just don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage this month. I don't know what to do. I've got the whole place empty. I had to kick them out. And she's like, well, have you tried Airbnb? And I'm like, air what? And she's like, have you tried Airbnb? And I'm like, no, what is it? So she explained to me what Airbnb was because I hadn't heard of it at the time. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, I got nothing to lose, but uh, try it. Now, you know, when you get one of those great ideas and, you know, you happen to tell your family or you tell your friends and then the first thing they say is, you know, no, don't do it. It's going to go bad. It's going to go wrong. What if people don't pay? What if people break your you know, break, break your chairs. What if that happens? What if that happens? And I think, again, the hardest thing, um, you know, there, there's three things in life. There's money, time, and change. And out of all of them, you know, one would say, well, money's the most, uh, sorry, um, time is the most important thing because you can always make 
more money, but you can never get back time. And I always say that is not correct because I can show you a dozen ways to make more money. The biggest and the hardest thing to do is change. And the reason for that is us human beings, we are accustomed and we are, um, you know, caught in our certainty that we want to have that change is the hardest thing for us to do. And, you know, nothing changes until you change. And most people fear change because, you know, it's the fear of the unknown. It's the fear of, you know, what if it does go wrong? What if, you know, what if the property remains empty? How am I going to pay my rent then? How am I going to pay my mortgage then? What if, you know, they do end up stealing or breaking some stuff and I'm liable for it? You know, what if this happens and what if that happens? And, you know, our human brain, who is, you know, which is, which is thousands of years old, is used to keep us safe. And as a result, when we are confronted by change, it's a lot simpler for our brain to keep us protected, which is what it's designed to do, as opposed to, you know, um, steer us in the right direction and support us to get over that change. So when I spoke to my friends about it, they were like, oh, no, don't do Airbnb. It's not going to work. It's silly. It's this and that. But again, if I would have listened to them, I obviously wouldn't be where I am today. And I started with one apartment. And in three days, I had actually made the whole rent for the week. And then after that, the other four days was pretty much profit. And the reason how, I, how it turned into a business, I didn't, I mean, I didn't plan, plan it, um, to have it as a business, which, um, you know, knowing, back, knowing that now, I would definitely say to people, uh, when you get into anything, make sure you have an exit strategy because you want to know your exit strategy, which I didn't have at the time. I fell into it simply by the fact that um, there were things that were happening which I didn't like. And for me to find a solution to those things, it became like the whole plan of a, bis of a business unfolded. For example, um, I had... Um, I kind of try to sort of run it as a hotel type for the hours of checking in and checking out. And um, I kind of sort of had the ch this checking time between like 3 and 8 p.m. But sometimes I wouldn't hear from the, um, from the potential guests until about 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock at night where they ring me and they go, hey, we're outside, where are you? And because communication, they just did not communicate. And within a short period of time, by, you know, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting there in bed and all of a sudden they call me. I mean, at that point, I didn't know if they were going to show up or anything. I then added extra things and extra charges, which then became, in, in, you know, a business in itself. And that I, I then developed that. And hence, I ran it as a business full time. And it gave me the opportunity to pretty much, I mean, in terms of hours, I wasn't really working a lot of hours, but anybody can do this. And you don't need to own property. That's what I want to stress out. You don't need to own property to actually make money with short-term rentals or make money with Airbnb. I mean, the book that I've written, which is a number one international bestseller, Airbnb for Property Investors, it's all about making uh, short-term rentals, a six-figure business, whether you own the property or not. I had uh, at one stage, uh, and for me, this was really like, it was a hobby, I guess. It wasn't really, even though I ran it as a business, it was still really a hobby to, to be completely honest. I mean, I didn't dedicate the time that I should have. I didn't, um, you know, expand as much as I could have because I wanted the freedom to be able to do what I want, when I want, with whom I want for as long as I want, which is how I define success. Everybody's definition of success is completely different. How I define success is purely by doing that. So being able to do what I want, when I want, for as long as I want, with who I want, no questions asked. That was the model that I wanted for me and that was the model that I used. But um, not having you know, to answer to anybody, that was also a highlight of it as well. So, but again, you, know, you don't need to own property to make money with short-term rentals, which is the beauty of it, which a lot of people actually don't know. Absolutely. So some people wouldn't even know what Airbnb is. That's where I really wanted you to explain sure. um, what, what it actually is and how it works. And then we will get um, to, to, into the skinny of um, how you actually then, um, you know, you know, get the money out of it. Would you care to let us know what Airbnb actually really is? Sure. Absolutely. So Airbnb is purely a company for what we call short-term rentals. Now, short-term rental is anything from one day when you're renting an apartment 
for one night to another guest uh, up to say 90 days would be considered short-term rental. So they can rent out an apartment, your apartment that you own or an apartment that you rent to sublease for a short-term basis, which can be anywhere from one night, one week, five days, 10 days, 12 days, depending on how long they need the, pl the property for and pay you a nightly rate as opposed to a weekly rate. So for example, uh, most of my properties are in Darlinghurst in Sydney's, um, in a, in a, in a suburb, like, um, in a city, I should say, very close to the CBD. It's about two kilometers out. And, um, I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example of one of my apartments. So I have this one bedroom apartment that I am charging, uh, long-term. So long-term is six months plus lease at $700 a week. Okay. So if we go with easy math, it's a hundred dollars a night. Normally, if you want to, um, amortize it, at $700 a week. Now with, with short-term rentals, the beauty of it is that you can charge usually between 50 to 80% more, uh, for the same property. So for example, instead of you charging $100 a night, you can charge a minimum of $165 a night on a normal Monday to Friday. Then you can charge like 175, an extra, you know, $10 to $20 on the weekend. And then when you have your public holidays, so when you've got Easter, when you've got yours, Christmas. for example, Exec Day, yeah, uh, when you've got Christmas, when you've got New Year's, then you add a premium, okay? So all of a sudden, $165 a night property then becomes $225, $250 a night. And you can also stipulate how long this property can be leased for minimum, minimum uh, for the minimum term. So for example, I can choose to have my property leased for five nights minimum a week or for seven nights a week minimum. Okay. Or for one night a week. It just depends. Now on top of that, you also, there's certain other charges that you add that the, uh, guest pays. And what's great about short term rentals is that you actually get your money up front, meaning the guest actually pays the full amount of their stay before they even get to your place. Okay. So that's really good because that's your guarantee that you've got the money that, you know, they're not going to go, Oh, uh, I can't afford to pay you this week or, Oh no, I can't afford to pay that right now. Or I, you know, I've only got $50, um, bill me for the rest later. So that's really, really, really good. Airbnb is just a platform. That's a, a very good platform in the sense of, you know, they do a lot of the advertising for you. The only fee you pay for Airbnb is just 3%. So when you go back to looking from, you know, a, a property that I was able to get $100 per night to now I'm getting a minimum of $165 plus and the pluses, uh, again, the pluses you can, you know, the pluses is, is literally a, 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 its own business because you then the the tenant well sorry the potential tenants has to pay a cleaning fee which you decide how much that is they also get to pay a bond which gets uh, taken from their credit card which again you decide how much that is uh and anything extra i would charge because like i said i did it as a business so for example if they wanted wi-fi they that was an additional charge if they wanted uh you know like the a, a breakfast basket that would be an additional charge. If they wanted a, an airport um, pickup, that would be an additional charge. Uh, the other thing that I also used to do would be, so in a one bedroom apartment, you have one bed, okay? But in the lounge room, you also had, uh, well, I mean, my, my, my properties had um, King Furniture, so they were all, uh, the, the, the furniture from, from King, you can actually turn it into a bed as well, so I could fit another two people there. So the $165 was just for two people, but then I would add an additional $50 per night per person thereafter. So all of a sudden you've got $165 and if they have four people in the same apartment because they want to save money or because they don't have anywhere else to go or because they have to be in that location for a conference, all of a sudden you've gone from 165 to 265 plus your cleaning on top, plus your internet, plus, um, you know, your breakfast, plus, plus, plus. Do you see what I mean? So right. all of a sudden, it adds up really, really quickly. So, you know, if they're staying for three nights at 250 or 265 a night, you know, you've made like a lot of money 
just what I was being making for, for a seven night stay. Do you see what I'm saying? So right. that's how completely different. Um, what, sorry, what was your other question that you asked me? I, I will, I will come in with the other question, which basically is, um, looking at the numbers and everything else that you've just mentioned, it actually, you know, bypasses having to have a property manager, right? Because you are going through the platform and you don't have to, um, you know, collect the funds. The platform is the one that gets the payment there. So um, does that save you with yeah, maybe uh, property management fees or how does that then, uh, you know, you know, help in creating that six figure you, you, you're making as well? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, going back to the Airbnb platform, which was my preferred uh, platform at the time, but not the only one that I was using, Airbnb only charges you 3%. So it, well, it, charges, it charges you, the owner, 3%, and it charges the potential guest 3%, okay, of whatever the amount that uh, you get paid as the owner or they pay as, as the potential tenant. And, I mean, 3% is really nothing when you're looking at, I mean, managers – Managers in Sydney these days charge about 8.8%, which includes GST. Um, again, you can negotiate, but in Sydney, that's kind of like the going rate. Uh, you can get it cheaper than that out in the suburbs, as low as 4.4%, but the, the usual is about 8.8%. So between 8.8 to 3%, it's a big difference. Again, you know, depending on the volume and on the amount of money that you're doing, but it's still a lot of money. When I started, I really only had, it was just my, well, I, I, to be honest, when I first started, I was doing everything myself. Uh, within a very, very short period of time, I actually had to get a cleaner because I absolutely hate to clean. <laughs> but um, I got a cleaner and um, they, did, they did all my cleaning and my checking outs. I was the only one that was doing the checking ins. And I was um, advertising on, you know, on Airbnb and a couple of other platforms to have that occupancy. Uh, but again, today, everything's automated. I have an email structure that I, you know, is part of customer service that gets sent out again on, automated, on automation when they, when they book. And everything is, is a process now. So everything is completely different uh, from, you know, when, when I first start, when I first started. But I mean, just to give you an example, um, because again, you know, when I was explaining it to my, to my friends, they were like, oh, uh, you know, a lot of them, to be completely honest, they started going, oh, you know, Ali, you're just, you're nothing but a glorified cleaner. And I said, all right, well, let's just take a look at the numbers. So I then got a studio, which was costing me $350 at the time which was in Darlinghurst. All my properties were in Darlinghurst because I'm a little bit of a control freak and I like to have uh, proximity to my assets, okay? So I rented a one bed, sorry, I rented a studio for $350 that was furnished, okay, in Darlinghurst, literally two walks away, like two buildings down. And I actually put that property at $99 a week on Airbnb. So that would make it a little bit under $700 a week, okay? Now, um, let's say $700 for easy math. So it was costing me $350, I was making $700, less than $350, I was making $350 profit, okay? I took $50 away for electricity, which you know was on the high side, but I, that was part of my math that I did, which gave me profit at $300 a week, okay? Now, here's the thing. For three hundred dollars a week, if I had two of those properties, that would be six hundred dollars profit. If I had three, it was nine hundred dollars profit per week. How many hours does one person need to do in Australia to make nine hundred dollars profit per week? Well, are you talking profit, or are you talking they have to be working within a a a, a, a job because that's like thirty. 38 hours that somebody right. got to work to get $900. So yeah, exactly. So exactly. And that was the whole point that I was trying to explain to my friends that called me the glorified cleaner. Um, yes, that might be what I, what I appeared to, to them. However, at the end of the day, I was making in terms of profit, I was making a lot of profit because, and that was just on three apartments. I had 15 apartments that I constantly run by myself for myself and um when you do the math on those and not all of them were studios a lot of them were one bedrooms and two bedrooms 
Um, and I had, a, I had a penthouse as well. And I also rented my place as well. Um, I rented a room within my place. When you do the math, it, it adds up to a lot of net profit, which is what they don't understand. It's a lot of net profit per week but I'm still not working 40 hours. I'm not even working 20 hours. I'm not even working 10 hours. You know what I mean? Because once you put ads on, like once you've listed your property on Airbnb and on all the other pro, uh, pro programs that I was using, it's not like I have to release it again and again and again. It's always there, you know? So um, when you're looking at, you know, leveraging time to make more money and getting a great return on investment, a great ROI, for me, short-term rentals is the way to achieve that, to give you that flexibility, but also the freedom, you know, especially if you're, for example, a mom that's got children, or if you are already uh, somebody that might have, you know, a job already, it's a great way to get yourself accustomed to how the business model works to be able to live that 40 hour job a week, you know, but make as much as, or if not more money than you would before, but having the freedom to live life on your terms, which, you know, I think that's for me, that's what life is about. Like I said, to do whatever I want, when I want, with whom I want for as long as I want, no questions asked. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that because um, at the end of the day, I mean, let's just ignore your friends that were calling you a glorified cleaner because it did sound like a lot of work. If you're going to have to jump on from, um, you know, place to place. And for a lot of people, anything that involves two or three different locations and having to juggle this and this already is um, a lot of work. I can see what you're talking about there. Um, there is um, quite a lot to master right from the start. But like you say, if you then um, you know document it all and have a systemized process, you can actually then um, engage some other people to actually help you out there. Now, um, you did mention you are really pedantic about where um, the houses are. Is location really key um, in order for you to succeed in this whole thing? Or can you actually buy cheap uh, you know, properties or rent out cheaper properties in the outskirts and then just uh, place them up on, um, on Airbnb there? Uh, look, definitely location, location, location helps. But that doesn't mean that you can't make money when you are not um, in a, in a you know, CBD or a central uh, location, okay? So... Obviously, the capital cities, so, you know, whether you've got Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, they're going to make you more money than the outskirts of those suburbs, okay? Definitely location, location, location. Uh, If you are in the capital cities like uh, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, you're going to be making more money than if you are on the outskirts. But that doesn't mean that you can't make money when you are on the outskirts. If your property is located near you know a a convention center or near a place that has a lot of interest whether it's a museum whether it's a race course etc you are always going to make more money than somebody that is not but if you're going to invest i would say go with the capital cities first and also look at properties that have got quirky things about them you know whether it's uh whether it's views of the city or views of the water or whether it's you know something quirky about the property um you know a nice backyard or the backyard you know uh, you know backing onto the river or anything that's quirky about a property a nice fireplace inside you know high ceilings um floor to floor to ground windows anything that's quirky about the property is always going to attract more from a financial perspective because you'll be able to charge more for it because it's unique, you know? So at the end of the day, anything that's unique will always have uh, more value than a cookie cutter. Absolutely. Now you do take people, um, you know, by the hand and show them exactly, you know, the six steps that you utilized to, um, you know, get the success that you now have. And I can see you are out there in uh, Las Vegas, um, enjoying the lifestyle, which obviously is proof positive that this actually works. How can people get a hold of you there, Ali? Okay, so um, that's actually why I wrote the book, by the way. I actually wanted to teach people this simple system that I created in order for them to 
be more independent, spend more time with their kids, have more freedom and live life on their terms, which, you know, for me, like I said, that's what life is all about. And, you know, to be able to have the freedom to do whatever you want with your kids, with your spouse, take that extra time, go fishing, go on the boat, paint the house, you know, paint, you know, draw, whatever, whatever, whatever it is for you that you like to do. It's having that, that ability and that flexibility to have the freedom to literally live life on your terms, as opposed to be chained to, you know, Oh, I got to go to work today, you know, and just living to, to the week for the weekends, you know, um, like I said, I mean, when, when, when I was watching my mom work, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours a day, you know, even an eight year old can see somebody that's not, that's not happy. And the, you know, the thing about, you know, the value that I wanted to create for people through the book was simply to show them a really simple system that they can implement from day one and they can make money from day one, whether they own the property or not. I mean, you know, predominantly it's called Airbnb for property, property investors. However, if you don't have property, you can still make money from it. So to get in touch with me, you can uh, find me on the website, uh, Ali, www.alimichaels.com, or you can uh, connect with me on Facebook, Ali Michaels, or you can connect with me on Instagram, which is at Ali.Michaels as well. Uh, but what I would like to do, if it's okay with you, is I would like to offer your viewers um, the opportunity to grab my book, and also some coaching with me. Now, normally on the website, uh, my book is free. My Airbnb book is free. The only charge that you have to pay for is just shipping. What I'd like to offer is, I would like to offer your guests $150 for the book signed by me as well as half an hour with me coaching to find out exactly where they are and a strategy that will work best for them so they can start making money from day one and live life on their terms. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, that little bit there where you're offering us the coaching plus the book, because obviously, you know, you, we, you would need to learn all these new tricks and the way that you actually did it. And, um, you know, you laid down in the book there. Now, this has been fantastic and I, I myself have learned quite a lot from this and I'm hoping um, the people in the audience are also going to take you up on the um, you know, offer to get coaching from you. What is the maybe one last thing that you can um, you know, bring people closer to you so that they can get to understand um, what you've been through, where you're going and what's in store so that they too um, you know, can be aligned with your vision and your mission? Well, look, I think um, here's the thing that, you know, we as humans are conflicted with, in my opinion, is that, you know, we always look for external things to validate us. And everything you need is within you, you know. Everything that you can ever possibly need, want, exists already within you. All you got to do is you just got to, you know, t you know, find it and just take it out so you can have that life that you were really designed and destined mm -hmm. for. And whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're absolutely right. So you have to have, I always say, belief will get you there, but self-belief will keep you there. And that's something, again, that you have to have about yourself. And the other most important thing is you've got to be grateful and you've got to have gratitude in your life for what the things that you already have because life will match what you have so if you are grateful for the things that you have in your life you know you're basically sending out the message to the universe that you are ready for more you can accept more you can handle more and the universe will give you more so rather than focusing on what you don't have i mean humans are really good at basically whether you believe you can or you can't you're absolutely right and like i said everything that we've always wanted exists already inside us however i guess the most profound thing that i can share and I can um, help people with is to actually be, be more clear. And what I mean by that is, you know, people will tell you what they don't want in their lives. You know, I don't want this. I don't want to be poor. I don't want this job. I don't want, you know, to have this. I don't want this. I don't want that. But they're not clear about what they do want. So the universe actually matches you on the vibration that you give out and what you focus on expands. So if you don't 
know what you want clearly or if you talk about the negative, you will never have enough. And as a result, the, you know, the universe won't give you more. However, if you practice what, you know, I practice every single day. And by the way, this is another reason why 97% of the population um, are ruled by the 3% that make the, you know, the 97% of the wealth because they are clear, but also because they're very grateful for what they have. So, you know, Tony Robbins again says, trade your, your expectations for appreciation and watch your whole world change. And gratitude is a big part of that. If you are grateful for what you have, even, even though it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something little, you're basically sending out, you, you know, the, the message to the universe that you can have more, you can handle more, and therefore the universe will give you that. But if you whinge and moan about what you don't have, it's basically saying, hey, I'm not ready for, I'm not ready for more, I can't handle more. And the universe is not going to give you that. What you focus on expands. So as I like to say, it's don't be a shit magnet and focus on the crap, <laughs> you know, focus on exactly what you want, be clear about what you want, but also have gratitude in your life. And uh, gratitude for me is not just in the form of appreciation, but it's also in the form of contribution. And I love to give. So, you know, you don't have to be a millionaire to give money to charity. You don't have to be, um, you know, you know, earning seven figures to, to help or to, uh, to give, you know, money to your favorite charity. It's not just about the money. You can give you time. You can give a smile. You can give, you know, your, your knowledge to somebody. It, it's not about the money. But if you, are, if you are a wealthy person and you don't give money, or if you're a poor person and you don't give money, you know, having money is only going to amplify who you really are. So if you are poor and you give money, when you're going to be rich, you're also going to give money. But if you don't give money until you are rich, you probably won't give it when you're going to be rich anyway. Do you know what I mean? So that's like the biggest things that I could um, leave your audience with today. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And one of your values is to give. And I can't thank you enough for the time, expertise, and the knowledge that you gave us today on this show. And for those that are watching, um, you would appreciate that not every day do we have people with, you know, an Airbnb speciality like what Ali has just shown us today. So this is your time. If you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel to subscribe because you don't want to miss out, especially on the, um, you know, gift that she's offered us, her, uh, her book plus, um, you know, coaching for 150 uh, dollars. I will be putting all the links at the bottom there so you can grab your sport in there. Well, Ali, thank you so much um, for your time today. And um, yes, this has been a very valuable e um, episode. Thank you. And if your viewers have got questions, please send them my way and I will answer them. Thank Absol you again for Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Thanks. Bye. Cool.